Excuse me. Hey, kid. Can you play my funny Valentine that thing? <laughs> you got it, Pop. I guess I should have told you. Ronnie didn't ask me to come down here. I came down to find out if you'd autograph this. Could you sign it to Rosanna with love from Mike with love from Eric Todd? I don't do that anymore. Yeah. Is there an E in Rosanna? <laughs> the other Eric Todd autographs Rosanna's got. Uh, so, how was lunch with your cousin? Embarrassing. You should have seen her. All that makeup, she looked like a miniature Joan Collins. I wonder if she had two dozen boys from Wisconsin in her hotel room. And where is she now? Upstairs, applying a second coat of Bonnie Bell. Well, I had a talk with Eric. It was a complete fiasco. Now, Eric is not telling me the whole truth. Now, Kate, you're a social worker. This is your bag. You enjoy a challenge. Maybe you can do something about Eric. No. no look, if he doesn't go back to work real soon, he's going to set the Canadian music industry back an entire generation. Not to mention the mortgage payment on your condo in Bermuda. Don't remind me. <laughs> Eric is a big boy. Yeah, I can't force him back on the stage. Well, there's got to be something you can do. Nope. Nope? What do you mean, nope? This is Nicky Peach all over again. <laughs> Nicky Peach. Nick the Stick. The Fuzz Man. The greatest reggae drummer the island has ever known. Jamaica. P-E-I. <laughs> what a performer. Then how come nobody's ever heard of him? Because when Nicky Peach decided to quit music and farm potatoes, Kate Brown wasn't there to prevent it. Please go see him. Look, maybe Eric doesn't want to be somebody's dollar sign. They told me at the mission that he, he gives all his royalties to charity. You see? He's gone. He's crazy. Okay, you've got to do something. Well, I don't think I can. I don't think he trusts me. Well, he doesn't trust me. I'm his agent. <laughs> what I mean is you'll think the only reason I want him back is for my 20%. And the fact that I'll make a fortune if he goes out on tour. Oh, okay, please. <laughs> You've got to talk to him. <laughs> Excuse me, Kate, are you busy? No, come on in. You remember my 12-year-old cousin, Sunita? Uh, the, the shorter. Uh, hi, Sunita. Hi. Kate, help me. Look at her. I don't know what to say to her. I'm too close to it. I'm not acting like a counselor. I'm acting like an idiot. Oh, thanks, Kate. I owe you one. Two. Three. I think he's overreacting. You know, Sunita, there hasn't been a girl born who doesn't want to look older than she really is. That lasts till you're about 22. A 12-year-old should be going on 13, not 16. I don't know why you two are so concerned. We want to protect you. Protect me from what? Lipstick? <laughs> from, from going up too fast. From giving off signals you don't understand yet and getting responses you can't handle. Kate, a little makeup doesn't do any harm. No, no, it doesn't. But the image it projects can. Why do you think two dozen boys came up to your room to talk to a 12-year-old girl? I can take care of myself. Those are famous last words, Sunita. But... <laughs> I don't feel like I look when I don't wear makeup. I, I look like a little wimp, but inside I feel grown up. That's what adolescence is all about. Just let it happen. Sunita DeFalco doesn't need any disguise. Even in knee socks and a pleated skirt and a blazer, she's still the most sophisticated 12-year-old I've ever met. You ought to see me in my evening gown. <laughs> 
can stand four more years of anonymity. <laughs> a day at a time, Sunita, a day at a time. Now, why don't you go put your cousin's mind at rest? You sing, don't you? Well, I call it singing. Others call it painful. <laughs> Nellie and that Boy Scout leader took one look at each other and disappeared. Well, maybe they're doing a good deed together. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> well, maybe we can put a wig on Pierre Burton and he can lip-sync it. <laughs> like the rest of us. Sure.